fact, recent killings of police officers allegedly at the hands of their wives highlights the dangers of unresolved marital issues. Now, most recently, Warrant Officer Nkosnati Ntinga and Metro Police Officer Captain Zulak Ndombela have been killed in Guazulu Natal. ENCA Senior Reporter Dustin Tatia looks at the possible motives behind these murders. Warrant Officer Nkosnati Ntinga was shot and killed after a home invasion last month. He and a friend, Admin Clark Mpendulo Mkluli, were kidnapped from Ntinga's home in Kwambunambi. A day later, his wife, Sergeant Ndombizordwa Ntinga, was in the dock along with an alleged hitman. Police investigations pointed to her as the alleged mastermind. Less than a week ago, Faith Ntombela, the wife of murdered Metro Police Captain Zwelake Ntombela, was linked to his May assassination. The question still stands, why? Because both are working at professional jobs. She's working in the court, west of all. I ask myself, why? No answer. And we are one family that is together. You can see all these members are family members. If there is any problem, we come together, we sort. If there was a problem, why never just cough it out to the family and say, this is a problem. But even me, I never see any problem. I was about to pick up because every day we're together with Thomas. For one activist, these cases highlight how some men could be suffering in silence. I would respectfully submit that government has surrounded everything when it comes to GPV to be about women. Awarenesses that we have are mostly calling men to stop abusing women. They are not calling men to advise them of their rights, to tell them how the justice system works. So hence I'm saying awareness programs are important to tell them what are their rights so that they don't commit these hideous crimes if they really believe that the justice system can work also for them. Matenjwa has taken up the fight on behalf of men who are victimized. She was recently at the bail hearing for the Ntinga murder accused. He had made an application for protection order, an application for a protection order. Uh, reasons and assumptions is that he had discovered that the wife was involved in a relationship with one of the accused, who is the one that is outstanding. And he had further even contacted the family of the wife to advise them, to advise them that these are the problems that they were having. But was there anything done? Was an, mind you, warrant officer Ndinga was a SAPS official. Why would it be difficult for him to get a, a, a protection order? But here we are. He, he, it ended up with him only applying for it. It was never granted. And where is he today? So it has become much of a concern, I must say, in that men, it seems as if they are only heard when they are dead. She says there are always warning signs. It's time that we also start having these honest and serious conversations. I will not lie about it. It, it, it cannot happen that you wake up the following day and then your wife has hired hitmen to kill you. Most of them, they are victims of abuse. Uh, I will make an example with the doctor in Kabecha. There was history of domestic violence. And the wife, when she spoke to her son, said that let's rather kill him first before he kills me. So you, before she even hired the hitman and everything, Ndinga, application of uh, protection order and all of that. So it is very rare that it is something that happened overnight and this, there is always history. The KZN Social Development Department admits more can be done to create a conducive environment for both genders to report abuse. I think at a perception level, there is still a perception that when you talk about gender-based violence, you are referring to violence against women. And I think as a sector, we need to raise awareness that the term includes everybody, men, women, boys and girls. I think that that is where probably the gap is, that we have not created a lot of awareness about gender-based violence, that everybody can be victimized based on their gender. Koza says men and women are equally at risk due to relationship challenges.
we should not be so focused on the gender of the perpetrator, whether it's a man or the woman. Uh, the issue that we must focus on the criminality that has happened because there's also a lot of men who've met, who've, with a lot of women that have been uh, killed on the hands of their husbands. And now we are seeing also this emerging issue of a husband dying in the, uh, on the hands of their wives. So I think we should not focus on the gender per se, but let's focus on the criminality. Uh, generally, there could be a lot of issues uh, that can lead to um, the murder of a, of, a, of a partner, of a husband or a wife. It could, one of them can be linked to issues of domestic dispute. It could be linked to bottling up issues in a relationship. Um, it could be linked to unresolved trauma in that particular relationship. It could be linked to issues of finance, economic uh, issues within the relationship. But there's also the element of greed. It's to benefit uh, from the partner's assets as well as financial gains because you can see in most of the matters, in the recent matters that we, we investigated, you can see how much the hitmen are promised you find that that cash is not in that partner's pocket. But after claiming policies, receiving benefits from the work of that uh, deceased, then the hitman will be paid. Regarding the attacks on police officers, the Hawks say there is no excuse for troubled partners not to reach out to them we have the supporting components within the police no matter what could be the motive be it a gender-based violence be it um, the financial problems the south african police service will support that particular family instead of the partners be it a man be it a wife taking this way that is going nowhere except going to prison for life For anyone else, government says there is also free help available to defuse potentially life-threatening situations. I think the first and foremost important thing is to create awareness that every, anyone can be abused, whether it's a man or woman, boy or a girl. Secondly, we need to encourage everyone to speak out. Uh, there are avenues, there are resources available, whether through our social development services or through um, the call centers where people can phone in when there are challenges. But also I think we need to encourage the criminal justice system so that when men go and report, they are accepted, they are not ridiculed, they are also offered the same support that is offered to everybody else that comes to the criminal justice system, particularly when they go and report that they've been victimized. I'm Desan Thathia in Durban.